Kia ora and welcome to this video that goes through general solutions of trig equations. Now I usually promise these videos will be short but this one I'm going to try and do the three basic trig equations in and because I don't just want to go straight to the formula I want to show you how we're using the symmetry to get there. This one could turn out to be a bit longer than usual. So hang in there and please get pen and paper and work through it with me. You're not going to learn anything just by sitting there and staring at your, uh, at your screen. Alright, so the first one we're going to look at is a cosine question, and this is like the one we finished in class on Thursday, so here it comes. Right, we're asking, asked here to find the solutions to cos of x equals 0.2, and I'm just going to hop to the second one here, so I'm looking at finding all of the solutions in the range from negative 2 pi, which is here, out to 4 pi. So we've got to be really careful about always going back to the range that we're looking for for our x values. We know that the period of a cosine function is 2 pi. So in one cycle of cosine, we would expect to find two solutions. right? And they would be these two here for the basic first period from 0 to 2 pi. But we're looking for more than that. We're looking for the solutions between negative 2 pi and 4 pi. So we're also going to find this number here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. We can find the first solution, which we're going to call alpha. So alpha is cos inverse of 0.2. And I'm rounding this quite hard, which is a bit dodgy, but never mind. Um, so the first solution there is at 1.37 radians. Okay. Right, so now let, let's look at the symmetry now of the cosine function. We can see there's an axis of symmetry through here, and there's an axis of symmetry through here. And there's one through here, and there's one through here. And we're going to use that. So let's start with this one down here, negative 2 pi. My solutions are going to be at negative 2 pi, plus 1.37 to that one there. Now I don't want it because of my range, but there would be a solution if my range was bigger out here with a minus, but I don't want that one. So that's my first one. I move up now to the next period over, which is 0 pi, and I get 0 pi plus 1.37 and 0 pi minus 1.37. So that's solution 1, 2, 3. Now I move up here. I've got 2 pi minus 1.37 and 2 pi plus 1.37. So that's my fourth and fifth solution. Lastly, I've got 4 pi minus 1.37. Now we can turn those into regular numbers, but it's actually more informative to see them with the 2 pi pattern going on because I can write a general solution in the form 2n pi plus or minus alpha, right? And that's the general solution to a cosine equation. And then I just need to be careful to pick off the values in my range. Okay, so obviously it would be nice to write that as a number. Um, but I'm going to leave that for you to do. Okay, so there are my six solutions. Here, there's number six, it got lost. Number six there, 4 pi, four pi minus 1.37. Okay, so general solution for cos of x equals k. Step one is get alpha, the principal value. Step two is to say that x is equal to multiples of 2 pi plus the alpha value and minus the alpha value. So n is equal to whatever we need it to be equal to to get in the right range. Right, now I want to try and link this in now to the idea of the unit circle and the definition of the functions. Remember that the cosine of an angle is defined as x over r. So when I have a unit circle with a radius of 1, the cosine of an angle is just the x value. So what we're being asked to do to find solutions for cosine of x equals k 
is to say, for example, in our example, cos of x equals 0.2, what angle is going to give me an x value of 0.2. All right, and you can see, if that's 0.2, that this is the value, so this point here, the coordinates of this, need to give me an x value of 0.2. So what's the angle in here that's going to do that? And that's my alpha value, that first angle there. That's 1.37 radians. But there's another place that I can easily get that value. And I'll do the easy one first. And that's if I spin the angle around another 2, two pi times. So every 2 pi rotation, right, I start here at an angle of 1.37, and then if I go around a full revolution, I hit that x value again and again. So that's going to give me my 1.37 plus 2 pi every time I do another rotation. Now, where else on the circle will I get an x value of 0.2? Well, it's down here. So that's when I have the angle of... So I'm going to go around a whole 2 pi and then back my alpha value. So that's how I generate the 2 pi minus alpha values. Okay, they're the, the ones down here. Um, if you found that unit circle description really hideous and it didn't make sense, come back to it once you've done lots of examples and it might have clicked into place then. Right, now we're going to look at the sine problem. Alright, just make that a bit smaller. So I'm just going to hop to the second question in here where we're trying to find the solutions to sine of x equals 0.7 and it's over this range. So visually we can see we're looking for that much of a range and we're going to have six solutions here, 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 here and here. Right, so alpha, my principal solution, is going to be sine inverse of 0.7. Now let's see what that equals. Okay, well the, the basic solution we can see is here and that's at point seven eight right again rounding dodgily to save space on the video screen right so in this case I'm going to work with each pi multiple and see what happens so at zero pi I'm going to think about going forwards 0.78 I can see by symmetry that at 1 pi, there's a solution if I go back that distance, so it's minus 0.78. At 2 pi, you know, because of the periodicity, 2 pi plus 0.78 is a solution. And at 3 pi, I want to do 3 pi minus 0.78. So I'm working backwards there. And lastly, at 4 pi, I'm looking for a plus 0.78. So it's quite easy to see, I think, with the pi one, what's going on when you write it out with multiples like that. At negative pi, back here, I'm heading backwards, so minus 0.78. Here, 2 pi plus 0.78. So I want to find a way to write that in a formula. And here it is. So I'm going to go every pi, so n pi, n's my counter, how do I generate the plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus pattern? Well, it's the function we saw in the starter on Thursday. So negative 1 to the power of n will give me even numbers for even numbered powers times alpha. So that's my general solution for x. Okay, and again, you can go into your calculator and, whoops, we missed a negative there, figure out what they turn into in single numbers. But that's how I find all six solutions for that one there. Right, the general solution for sine of x equals k, the steps are again as follows. Alpha is my principal solution. 
right? Then all my x solutions come from taking multiples of pi and either adding or subtracting the alpha value. Right, so we'll have a look at the unit circle thing again. Remember, sine theta is y over r. So here's my theta. In this case, I'm looking for sine of x equals 0.7. So I'm saying, what angles are going to give me a y coordinate of 0.7? So actually it's a pretty dodgily drawn circle, isn't it? Here we are. There's, there's the y value I'm looking for. 0.7. And I'm saying, what's that angle in there? Right, and that angle is my alpha value. So I'm going to get that y value of 0.7 at alpha. 2 pi plus alpha. When I do one whole rotation like this. See, I'm going around 2 pi. And again, at 4 pi plus alpha. But I'm also going to get that value at this angle around here, which is that little bit in there is alpha by symmetry, which means this whole big angle is pi minus alpha. So then at 3 pi minus alpha and 5 pi minus alpha, I'll be hitting this y value again. All right, again, this is, that is hard linking up the intuition between the unit circle picture and the curve. So if you don't get that straight away, come back to it after you've done lots of examples. Happily for us, the last one is the easiest one, and that's the tangent graph. So here it comes. Right, well, the tan graph is lovely because it has period of pi. Here we're just looking for tan x equals 2 in the range negative pi, negative 2 pi up to 4 pi. So I'm looking for all these values here. The periods x, I've got a range of 6, sorry, the periods pi, so I've got a range of 6 pi. I'm looking again for 6 solutions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There they are. And first one that I'm after is here. So this point is at 1.11. This one will be at pi plus 1.11. This one is at 2 pi plus 1.11 and so on. So the last one we want 3 pi plus 1.11. Right, so definitely the easiest to see visually. This one is at negative pi plus 1.11 and we'd better do the last one that's in our range negative 2 pi plus 1.11 right you can figure out what those numbers are you don't need me to do that so my general solution for tan of x equals k is step one I found find alpha which is tan inverse of k and then step two is to say n times pi plus alpha Okay, that's plenty of video for today, so um, let me know if that made any sense. Of course you can do these on your graphics calculator, but it is really important that you know how to do them algebraically as well. The next two videos are going to move on to more difficult ones, firstly in this form. So, looking at what we do with that, and then into the full form where we've got in-context ones like this. Right, so we have to look at what to do here, but the, the hardest ideas are probably the, the geometric generalisation that we've got happening in this video. So thanks for watching and see you in class.